Welcome to G-Wizard University. My name is Bob Warfield. I'm with CNC Cookbook and today we're going to talk about feeds and speeds for turning and lathes. Okay, using our G-Wizard calculator software. Here's what G-Wizard looks like shortly after you've installed it. Um, as you can see this is the feeds and speeds application and it comes up by default set to display a generic milling machine. So your first task is to change that over to a lathe profile of some kind, whether that be a, a generic lathe or one of the lathes that come pre-configured with the system. So we'll just take the Haas lathe here for a starting point. Uh, you can check our other videos to see how to configure a machine profile for your particular lathe. It's not hard, but uh, we're just going to use the Haas for the moment and talk about that. So the basic idea here is you want to work left to right and top to bottom until you have your feeds and speeds calculated. And so having selected a machine, uh, and by the way your machine profile may include an adjustment to the surface speed or the, the chip load that's to be used. We have it set to use uh, 100 percent, uh, but you can make those either smaller or larger uh, in the machine profile you would then go in and select uh, the material you want to cut. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different uh, material families. Uh, if you don't see the material you'd like, uh, click the more button and this brings up uh, not only a history of the materials you've selected in the past uh, but also a search capability that will let you search through the material database and find what material you want to use. Uh, the next thing is to select what type of a tool you'd like to use uh, for this operation and you can uh, either select that from our generic list of tools or uh, if you select a tool crib you can set up a tool crib uh, with just the tools you have available for your lathe, perhaps the tools in your turret. Well, let's take a closer look here. We have basic turning tools, uh, twist drills, variety of different kinds of drills in fact, reamers, uh, parting and grooving tools, threading tools, uh, tapping, uh, and even if you've got a mill turn machine you can bring up all the standard uh, uh, milling tools as well. Uh, for this quick video we're just going to concentrate on turning, so I'll select a carbide uh, turning tool. Now let's say we're going to uh, be turning a piece that's about three inches in diameter, uh, so we'll go ahead and select that. <coughs> And your next step is you have a couple of what we call mini calcs. These are specialized calculators that help you make decisions uh, about your surface finish and your depth of cut. Um, so for example on the surface finish uh, your part may be calling out a particular RA or RMS finish. Uh, here we're set to imperial units so this is micro inches uh, that you may wish to get and so depending on the nose radius of your particular insert, uh, you can calculate uh, by changing the uh, inches per revolution of feed uh, exactly what surface finish you're going to get. Um, let's leave that aside. We're going to focus on the roughing more than the finishing here. Uh, finishing cut's pretty easy to calculate with surface finish calculator. Uh, but for roughing, we want to know what should our depth of cut be. The answer to that question is based on what kind of an insert you're using and we have all of the standard insert uh, shapes. I'm just going to go ahead and specify an 80 degree diamond uh, but we have all sorts of different uh, possibilities here. Um, let's go back and pick up our diamond and you want to have the overall insert size as well. Uh, let's say it's a half inch uh, inscribed circle insert uh, so the side length is 0.472 inches. What kind of a cut are we going to make? Do we want a, really a heavy roughing cut, a medium cut, or are we going to make a, a finishing cut? That's going to affect the cut depth that's specified. So I'll go ahead and specify a full roughing depth. Now you may not be presenting that insert uh, exactly uh, where the edge uh, is parallel to the workpiece. You may have an inscribed angle or lead angle rather there that's going to affect that and if you change your lead angle that will change the uh, uh, the depth of cut. Well, let's just leave it at zero and the recommended depth of cut there is 0.316 uh, 
and that'll go ahead and be entered in right here. So now we basically have uh, uh, a recommendation for feeds and speeds. 1,685 RPM, 15.5 uh, inches per minute feed rate. Uh, it's quite a heavy cut, uh, so it's projecting this will be about a almost a 15 horsepower cut, and uh, you can see different calculated values. These are various limits you can set. Uh, you know, you could change the horsepower limit down to say 8 horsepower if you want to take it easier on the machine. Uh, you could lower the RPM limits, whatever. You can override virtually any of these things. Uh, and when you do so, again, what happens is you get uh, uh, a little padlock telling you you've overridden this particular field. G Wizard's no longer using its calculated values it's using a value you've overridden and everything downstream of that value uh, will get uh, overridden and so based on your on the value you typed in now just click the padlock to make it go away go back to what's being calculated uh, another thing worth knowing is we have what we call our tortoise hair uh, slider here that has different settings you know that's a full roughing light roughing finishing and what we call a fine finish uh, so you can use that as well to kind of throttle things up or down based on the conditions you're working on. Um, you can also come in and provide manufacturers recommended surface speed and chip load uh, based on the type of insert that you're using. There's you know so many hundreds if not thousands of different inserts that uh, uh, just using the average may not be the best thing. You want If you have the real specs from your manufacturer go ahead and and just put those in and, and G Wizard will go ahead and adjust for your cut conditions uh, and do the right thing based on that. So that's all there is to it. Uh, feeds and speeds uh, for turning and lathe operations are real simple and straightforward, real easy to do. And uh, we hope you'll give G Wizard a try and, and get started doing speeds and feeds for your lathes with it. Thanks very much.